1950s Science Fiction Podcast, Season 3, Episode 2, Short Story and Movie Review, Target Earth and Deadly City. Hello, and once again, welcome to my podcast. I hope you are still listening to the show, regardless of how long the show is between episodes. I have moved into my new house and hope to have a greater frequency of shows in the coming months. I hope everyone's been patient with the slow production of episodes and remain a loyal listener. Now on to the show. Today's topic will be a double review, both a short story and movie based upon the short story. The story is titled Deadly City by Ivor Jorgensen, a.k.a. Paul W. Freeman. The story is a science fiction short story first published in If Magazine in the March 1953 issue. Target Earth was a 1954 science fiction B-movie based upon Deadly City and produced by Herman Cohen. Both the movie and short story have their similarities and differences. I will discuss how both are alike and how they are different. Deadly City The short story Deadly City, written by Paul W. Fairman, who used the pseudonym of Ivor Johansson, was a prolific writer. He wrote in different genres, including noir and sci-fi. His noir background will manifest itself in the character's backstory. The story starts when a woman wakes up one morning to discover the city inhabitants are all gone except for her. Her name is Nora King, and she lives in Chicago. Nora had slept very soundly through the night due to a large dose of sleeping pills she took. She took an overdose. Nora attempted suicide the night before by taking 7 out of 10 tablets. However, the dosage was not lethal enough. Despite this, Nora gets dressed and goes outside only to find the building and streets devoid of people. She then decides to start walking away from her apartment complex. At the same time, a man named Frank Brooks is lying in the street in another part of town. Last night, he had a few drinks at a local bar and hoped to end the evening with an attractive female who sat across from him. The last thing he remembers is passing out and then waking up in an alley minus all his money and valuables. Frank also sees the city of Chicago as lifeless and appears to be the only one around. Frank decides to walk down the street to find out what's wrong. The city. As both Nora and Frank explore the city, they find nothing but deserted streets and no person in sight. Then Nora hears footsteps, and the sound gets closer and closer. Nora is terrified and runs away, fearing for her life. She is not sure who it is and what it is. The footsteps continue to get closer, and the pursuer catches up with Nora. The pursuer is Frank, but Nora is still terrified and doesn't know him. Frank introduces himself and ensures Nora that he means her no harm. Frank asks Nora if she knows what's going on and states that she doesn't know either. Frank explains to Nora that he woke up in an alley after a few drinks the night before. Likewise, Nora explains to Frank how she woke up from a long sleep and found the city deserted. Another couple. Frank and Nora look at their situation and decide to keep going. Frank believed the city was evacuated by the military for some reason. While Nora suggests the Russians used a bomb on the city. It was not uncommon for mass evacuation of city populations or civil defenses during the 50s. The couple continues to explore the the deserted city and decide to find a hotel. They do find a hotel, however, another couple is hiding there, both a man and a woman. The man tells Frank to come on in and join them. Frank and Nora walk into a restaurant where they see a man eating food with another woman. The man introduces himself as Jim Wilson, and his companion's name is Minya. Jim explains how he was arrested for assaulting a man accused of cheating at cards. 
while in a holding cell. Everyone was evacuated while he hid. Later he finds Mina and she agrees to accompany him wherever he goes. She is a cleaning lady from an apartment complex not far from the restaurant. She was at a local bar waiting for her paycheck just before the evacuation. The killer. There's another person inside the city hiding as well. He avoided the evacuation by choice. The young man is from a wealthy and well-educated, well-connected family, but seems that he has some mental health issues. The young man sits in the back of a back seat of a limousine and is about to be evacuated. Before the driver can start the car, he is struck in the head by the, and killed by the passenger. The killer takes the body of the chauffeur and stages it in the garage. How he positions the dead body suggests the young man is a serial killer at a time when the behavior was known but not defined as such. The killer then drives the car into the city but sees a roadblock ahead and stops. He leaves the automobile and hides in the nearby woods while the military searches the car. Attacked. After dinner, both couples retire to, to the hotel room of their choice. Frank and Nora check into a room while Jim and Mina stay in a nearby room. Nora tells Jim that she doesn't want to be alone and stays in the room with her. They both hear a strange noise coming from outside the hotel. The window had been left open so the sound was somewhere in the distance. They both had heard it before while outside wandering around in the city. Frank seems to think it could be a signal of some kind. Frank says goodnight to Jim Wilson while Nora is in the shower. Frank hears footsteps in the corridor, and before he realizes it, someone puts their hands on the door, room door to prevent closing it. Frank struggles with the door for a few moments, but can push the door against the frame, with the person knuckles between the frame and the door. Frank lets go of the door, and the would-be attacker leaves in a hurry. In the morning, Frank ventures out into the hallway to find signs of the attacker. He follows a trail of blood down the stairs and into the lobby. He finds the trail stops at the hotel pharmacy. Frank sees where the attacker helped himself to bandages and other supplies. It seemed like he was badly hurt from the door pressed against his hand. Frank leaves the hotel while the others slept. He goes out into the street and hears only silence. He makes his way through the streets and finds the building of one of the local newspapers. Once inside, he looks for a report of the evacuation of the city. He does, various, does find various reports of the situation and collects the hard copies and then goes back to the hotel. Once he is back at the hotel, he meets with Jim Wilson along with the two women to discuss what he found. The reports explain how the military is reacting to an alien invasion that hasn't been experienced before. One of the fastest urban evacuations ever conducted occurred while they were left behind. Frank explains to Jim the importance of finding a way to join the rest of the evacuees located south of the city. Frank wants to leave the city as soon as possible. However, however, Jim is more comfortable staying in the city. He wants to take advantage of every take advantage of everything the city has to offer, such as free food, a free place to stay, and just about everything else he could want. While they are discussing the current situation, they hear the roar, the roar of military jet fighters outside the city. To their astonishment. The jet fighters are destroyed by the alien invaders. This prompts Frank to decide to leave the city now, and Jim Wilson decides to leave but changes, changes his mind at the last moment. Frank believes that Jim is abusing Mina and an argument ensues, then a fight between Frank and Jim. Frank knocks Jim cold, however. Mina protests Frank's action and tells him that she was just fine being with him. The killer is back. 
When the fight is over between Frank and Jim, the killer walks through the door just after he heard the scuffle between Jim and Frank. He introduces himself as Leroy Davis and holds a revolver in his hand while he threatens the group. He is indeed the person who attacked Frank last night. This is proven because the killer is wearing a bandage on his wounded hand. Davis further explains that he was going to be driven out of the city but killed his driver and hid. He boasts about how he has killed before and how his father hired an excellent attorney to get him leniency in the court. A person is killed. The killer orders the group to go downstairs to the lobby and they comply. However, they are all nervous and don't know what to expect. They do know they are in danger and Frank tries to think of a plan while the killer taunts them. Mina panics and tells the killer to go ahead and do what, she, what he wants. At that point, he shoots and kills her. Before he can fire again, Wilson lunges toward him, grabs the gun with one hand, and the killer's throat with the other. Wilson strangles Davis to death. Wilson lets the body fall to the ground and then goes to Mina's face and covers it. In the meantime, Frank and Nora head outside to summon help. They had heard a military vehicle pass by after Mina's death. When they go outside, both of them hear that strange wailing noise that sounded last night. As they walk down the street, at a distance, three humanoid figures are in the middle of the street and appear to be in, in distress. Then all three figures collapse to the asphalt. Just at that time, a military serviceman approaches in a jeep. He explains how the army had the aliens contained to the city, and that the Earth's atmosphere had a toxic effect on their systems. The serviceman explains they would not be penalized for missing the evacuation due to the current situation. Jim Wilson comes out of the hotel and confesses to killing Davis to the soldier. The soldier states that he will ha have the matter investigated, and they both are are under the jurisdiction of the army. Epilogue. Finally, finally everything is settled down in the city of Chicago. The aliens have been defeated and more citizens have come back to the city of Chicago. Businesses are starting to open back up and things are more or less getting back to normal. The three survivors meet each other in a restaurant. Jim Wilson is cleared of murder charges after the army investigated the matter. However, he thinks an escape charge will come from the night of the evacuation, so he decides to turn himself into the local police. Frank says he wants to get back to his job and get some money in his pocket. They both say goodbye to Nora, and they all part ways. Nora leaves the restaurant and walks up the side the street to find a place to work, her trade. Nora is a sex worker. Now that concludes the story. I will discuss the movie Target Earth. The movie Target Earth. Now I will discuss Target Earth, the movie in which Deadly City was its source material. Target Earth is a 1954 science fiction movie independently, independently made by Acton Pictures Incorporated and distributed by United Artists. The movie was produced by Herman Cohen and directed by Sherman A. Rose. It was, it was shot in black and white and has a runtime of 75 minutes. The principal players are Richard Denning as Frank Brooks, Kathleen Crowley as Nora King, Richard Rees as Jim Wilson, and Virginia Gray as Vicki Harris, Mina in the original story while actor Robert Rourke plays the part of the psychotic murderer Davis. Some other characters were created for the movie, but do not appear in the short story. I will mention more on that later. The movie's screenplay does follow the story for the most part. It starts with Nora waking up in her room. However, in the story, Frank is the first one to be heard. The action moves to Nora, then goes from there. In both versions, Nora tried to commit suicide. Frank was a bit different. Frank doesn't mention how he tried to pick up a woman at the tavern, but says he got beaten, robbed, and thrown into an alley. This was just one of many changes from the story to the screen in place due to code. 
This will be seen later on in the movie. The original story does contain some mature content. Parts of the story were modified for the Hays Code, since the, which still dominated the motion picture industry. Another modification from the story to the movie is the relationship between Jim Wilson and Mina, who was Vicky in the movie. In the movie, Jim was already in a relationship with her, and, and they avoided the evacuation by bar hopping most of Chicago. Jim was never arrested for assault and put in jail. While Nora was a widowed spouse and became depressed and then tried suicide in the movie, but in the story, he was depressed and suicidal due to abusive man. The biggest difference between the movie and the story is robots and aliens. The movie had robots controlled by aliens move about the city and use a death ray to kill or destroy anything that moved. While the story had aliens make a few appearances but did not use robots, the same was true with the military. In the movie, you saw actual soldiers outside the city working on a captured robot. In the story, there are only, there are, there are only seen when jets fly overhead and toward the end of the story. In the movie, the army scientists discover a way to disable the robots, while the story states they died while exposed to Earth's environment. As well in the story and movie, the killer Davis is shown toward the last moments of the motion picture. He makes one appearance in the movie and not two. He does shoot and kill Vicky while Jim strangles him to death. At that point, a robot bursts through the window and all three head to the roof. Once on the roof, Jim Wilson tries to shoot the robot but is killed. One more, dim one more difference between the story to the movie. Final thoughts. Now, here are some final thoughts I, ha I have on both the movie and story. I watched the movie version of the story back in the late 90s and owned a VHS copy of, of it. I bought it at a movie in record store at the mall not, longer, not long after I finished college. The cover art on the box attracted me to purchase the movie, which I had never seen until then. I did enjoy watching this movie, but only thought of it as fair. Not quite as good as some of the other 50 sci-fi movies I've seen previously. It was very low budget, and the plot was a good story. It just seemed like it didn't have that charm the other movies had. Within the original short story that Target Earth is based on, Deadly City, I only recently learned about it via blog post. I've been interested in reading it and downloaded the story from the Internet Archive site. The story was an easy read and more in depth on its characters than the movie. The author tends to look into human nature in a survival situation than elements of sci-fi. However, the sci-fi is there and some mentions of flying saucers and aliens are contained in the dialogue. However, it's still a very good story and I enjoyed reading it more than watching the movie. Deadly City combines elements of science fiction, mystery, and crime drama to create a very engaging story. If you want to read the story, you can download it for free at archive.org. As I have already mentioned, the story was published in 1953 issue of If, a short story publication that has dozens of issues uploaded on the site. Target Earth can be watched on YouTube and can be bought as a DVD. Well, that's all for now. This episode has been very long and has taken a good while to complete. I'll be back on the feed with a new episode as soon as possible. I do ask for all my listeners to be patient. I can't always devote as much time to podcast production as many other podcasters can. Thanks for listening.